We have an, an incredible opportunity, as you know, to change the direction of this state and this nation. We've seen harbingers of uh, change in the wind. We saw an election with Scott Brown where he was outnumbered three to one in registration. But he took a message of change and a commitment to conservative principles and he took away that seat that they said belonged to the Kennedys for 50 years, folks. We've got great opportunities before us, incredible opportunities to take back this nation and to take back this state. And I'm looking forward to seeing the kind of things that are going to be happening this year. But there are two issues, folks, that we need to, I think, maybe think about a little bit as we enter into these election seasons. Number one, remembering what it means to be a Republican is absolutely key. As it was said a little bit earlier, Republicans lost the right to govern nationally a few years back. They lost the right not because they were too conservative or too consistent in their values. They didn't lose the right because they stood on principles of liberty, government, personal freedom, none of those issues. They actually lost the right to govern because they became exactly like they replaced. They increased spending, they had the earmarks we talked about, they passed Medicare Part D, and many of them, including our president, it was one of the saddest days, I think, in the, in the uh, recent memory, pushed for a $700 billion bailout. As did our candidate for president, if you recall. Now folks, that's not what it means to be a conservative, and it's not what it means to be a Republican. But I'm trying to tell you, what I'm saying here today is, it wasn't our philosophy that was wrong, it was our leaders at the time, some of them, who went wrong. The voters became cons became uh, confused, and it's a none of the above is kind of where it went. Well, guess what? People got the change they wanted. How's that working for you? We ended up with Barack Obama, and people have been running for the hills. I remember right before the election, I drove next to, I drove past the hospital and looked in the parking lot, and two thirds of all of the bumper stickers in that particular hospital parking lot had Barack Obama stickers on them. Within six months, you can't find a one. Nobody wants to admit they elected this guy. Now that's great news, but there's two things that we need to learn. First of all, they're running from the left. They're not necessarily running towards us. Because there's really two things that we need to be talking about. The first of it is, we get it, conservatism works, and when we stand by what it really means to Republicans, we do get the right to govern, right? Yes. The second issue is, folks, people without a vision perish. I don't know if you really watched what happened with, uh, with Scott Brown. But he talked about the failures of government, but he also talked about proactive ideas. That is ex extremely important if we want the right to govern. You see, I feel our folks lost their way because they forgot to be about things that are conservative. So they fell into the same traps of big government, big spending, earmarks, all of those things. It really isn't a mystery. If you're not fighting for the things that we believe in, you get sucked into the things that they believe in. Isn't that what happened? When we hear somebody like Scott Brown that comes up with a proactive message consistent with our conservative values and a recommitment to conservatism, we win. That's what really has happened there and that's what I think we're starting to hear all over this nation. And folks, that is music to my ears. Now I get a chance to uh, talk a little bit about my friend Sam Honestead. As you know, I'm running for state senate. I represented uh, Placer County for six years, and I'm, I'm proud to have the endorsement of Sam Honestead, Tom McClintock, Ted Gaines, Dan Lowe, all my good friends, and many of you in this room. But what I really want to talk about is this issue of having a vision of what we're for, and then recommitting ourselves to what really are core conservative principles. That is a winning combination. And I've known Sam Honestead now for many, many years. Before he, was, uh, before he was my senator, he was my assemblyman. And that is never a question you've ever had to ask about Sam Honestead. Folks, we need the people in, in higher office who have that kind of commitment to conservative principles that do not waver, 
but also have a vision of what government is supposed to be about. We've heard some great ideas about from Ted Gaines about eliminating the tax increases. We've heard from Dan Logue about getting rid of AB 32. Folks, when we're fighting for stuff, we win. And, we, and Sam Onestead has always been that kind of man. What would it be like when we had an election if we would have had a lieutenant governor like Sam Onestead? What kind of choices would we have in the future if we had good men sitting at statewide office to, to select from? Folks, it would be a different ballgame. We need to elect conservatives to statewide offices, and we need Sam Honestead to be our next lieutenant governor. So I'm happy to introduce my friend, Sam Honestead.